welcome to lecture 20. Uh, in this lecture, we will discuss uh, various attributes of leadership and team building. In this week, uh, in the last few lectures, we have been discussing various aspects on change management. In the last lecture, we discussed how to resolve conflicts and um, in the change management paradigm. And we have seen that in resolving conflicts and change management paradigm, the leadership is very important uh, aspect which play a big role in urban governance. So, it is very important therefore, to see the various aspects of the leadership and leadership is not uh, never fulfilled if there is uh, a, a better team working uh, along with the leader. Uh, so, leadership and team building both should be discussed together. So, today we will be uh, covering these two subjects uh, under the uh, urban governance section. So, today Basically, to, uh, apart from the discussion on the leadership and team building, we will also have a summary on the urban governance that is the first section of this whole course. Uh, so, let us start the leadership part. Now, I was just going through the, uh, the few of the urban issues in this picture you can see that, that there are various reports uh, um, in the newspaper and the electronic media which is reported and which is where urban governance is given the urban governance has been uh, put before the um, question mark or the uh, question mark and whenever this kind of issues come, uh, definitely the overall urban governance and the leaders, uh, this comes to question that how whether really we are able to uh, lead the our urban area or not. So, here the leadership is questioned here because uh, there are technical expertise to uh, avoid this kind of situation. Um, so, leadership is the question. Along with this, we showed few pictures uh, last day, uh, these pictures as well, uh, just to show that yes, a, a effective leader can change the very word scenario to scenario like this. And you mentioned an example of a mayor of uh, Jim Lerner. Uh, from the city of Curitiba. So, therefore, it is very important. There are many cases like that, it is not a standalone separate case. So, it is very important that to see what are the basic attributes of a leadership. Now, a brief def description of the leadership, especially for the public office, is that leadership is the holder of the public office and it should promote and support these principles by leadership and leadership and example. A leader will always make example so that the team can follow and since it is a public office. There is a, uh, a statement given by a Supreme Court, court cases regarding the public office. I would like to share with you just have a read before I uh, explain something. So, let me just underline few key words. So, I hope you could read the uh, basic keywords like uh, principles of public life uh, for every democracy and the uh, conduct of every holder of a public office entrusted with certain powers uh, and uh, public interest uh, powers for public interest and uh, therefore, the office is held by them in trust for the people. So, this statement give uh, ending with the word people. So, in the public office like um, uh, municipal corporation or the municipalities, the people who are leading the organization basically it is the trust of the general people uh, and because of that trust they are enjoying some power for the democracy that is why they are bound to, they are mandated to perform uh, for that organization. So, with this uh, let us see some general attributes of leadership. Now, first is the courage, a leader should have a, a courage um, from within, he or she should take risk, he or she uh, should have enough courage 
to fight with any uh, issue and any problems in that area or within the organization so that he can defeat he can conquer that um, uh, problem and definitely can show the team a uh, successful scenario or some solution selflessness a leader should always show the interest of the people interest of the others first he will keep the interest of the others first and then his own interest next is the dignity it is not only the self dignity it is the self dignity and dignity of the others a leader always recognizes others contribution recognizes each and every human beings contribution and their um, um, participation in the overall governance framework next is the mental strength definitely without the uh, mental strength a leader cannot perform and mental strength comes with determination whenever leader a leader uh, takes up any project unless he is determined to perform that to fulfill or to accomplish that work uh, that work is never done so determination and mental strength is much more important here missionary zeal and together i would like to uh, discuss vision and, uh, and and missionary zeal the example which i showed for the curitiba mayor it is the vision that another 10 years or 15 years how our cities could be so it is the vision and a zeal to do something as a mission that is required for a leader uh, which takes the whole team and whole city into a new uh, scenario then ability to take risk you have to take risk without taking a legitimate risk a leader cannot Uh, be successful because there are uncertainties but a, a one successful uh, leader uh, must take um, legitimate risk and he they, he will be able to calculate the possible implications of the risk and therefore he is a better person to take that risk so that is the another very much important attribute of a leader strategic yes at times a leader has to be a strategic leader, leader in terms of taking decisions uh, in organization in outside the organization within the city outside the city we discussed in the beginning that a organization like urban local government they have to interface with the people with the other government organization therefore a, a leader has to be strategic and has to play a right kind of role in interacting with various kinds of organization next is the constant vigilance and monitoring whenever you are working with the team you have to be vigilant you have to monitor their work so that you can uh, assure that yes at the end of the time the work is done yes team work is essential making a uh, making a cohesive team making a dedicated team is the, is the first job where uh, before executing a project what a leader need to do because if a leader works alone uh, alone a work cannot be performed so team work is important so we'll discuss team work in much details let little later on research and development and knowledge research and development uh, every leader has to have has to have their own knowledge and set up information for instructing a team or for vision or envisioning the team because he has to have some basic information uh, to to jump before the project or jump before the work and along with the team and only when only then the team accepts leader as their leader uh, if they find that yes leader has sufficient knowledge and experience and the uh, sufficient um, uh, research and informations are there then only his acceptance will be there care for details a leader uh, since he uh, or she uh, puts his interest at the last therefore he cares for the details of the team and the organization in very much details so that is another important um, aspects of the leadership he is human in his conduct and consideration he treats people humanly he he uh, he recognizes them he treats them uh, humanly and with humanity and uh, he keeps humanity at the top irrespective of any other diversities and the differences self development it is not the sufficient that to make team or to vision uh, to 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 envision and to uh, develop knowledge it is also important to develop self as a leader every person at the end of the day is a individual person and how he is doing how he is developing self by constant upgradation of the knowledge constant upgradation of the skill and constant upgradation of his leadership power and the management power by uh, constant practice and feedback mechanism that is important 
In the last section of this whole course, we will have two dedicated weeks for self development, where we will completely discuss that for a self development of leaders and the city managers, what are the effective skills which a leader and um, city managers can practice. So, therefore, we will discuss this part also in the later, so that at the individual level each of you can get maximum benefit from the self development, which sometimes acts as a beneficial for our personal life, the official life and as a whole for the benefit of the country or the organization. So, therefore, we discussed various aspects of team building. Uh, <coughs> I would like to mention that this is just a indicative list of the attributes of the team building. There are set of team building skills and the management skills which come which we will discuss uh, when we will be discussing the development management and the self development part. So, this is overall just an overview on the attributes of the uh, leader in total. So, a leader is uh, um, never a successful leader if there is no team working on behalf of a uh, leader. So, therefore, we should learn team building in greater details. You have seen that um, the organization where a leader and a successful or efficient team is working together, those organizations are successful and they are performing better. If you have a better team, but a bad leader, it cannot perform. If you have a better leader, but bad team, they cannot, they cannot perform. So, it is the combination and compatibility of the leader and the team building which is required at every organization level, not only the urban governments. Now, let us see the description or the definition of the team. A team is a cohesive group. Please see the terminologies which I am uh, trying to um, uh, highlight. Cohesive group of small member number of people having mutual trust. This is very important point in a team building, faith and respect. Respect with complementary skills and committed to a common purpose, performance goals, and collaborative unified approach. Therefore, if you see the terminologies like cohesive group, trust, faith, and respect. So, these are very important aspects in a team building which a team member has to have. Now, advantage of the teamwork a teamwork is always sharing information and ideas. Then a meeting psychological needs being with others. It is not only the psychological needs of the organization, it is also organization individual and family. So, a team member always share all this uh, requirement as well. Benefits of possible specialization. When there are multiple specialized uh, people in a team and they exchange with each other, everybody benefits from the specialization. An urban government is the classic example of having too many uh, specialization in that work. For example, in urban sector, you need planners, engineers, architects, finance expert, management expert, the assessment expert, the community development expert, the infrastructure expert. So, it is a fantastic uh, opportunity for it uh, for creating a team, so that everybody can get benefit of mixing with each other. Not only that, the improved learning and decision making. We learn within our team uh, from each other that how to uh, take decision for a particular aspect. So, these are the advantage of the team work and also synergy of the effort. We know that 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, but if we work in a team 1 plus 1 is equal to 3, because uh, we get more ideas when we work together. So, this is a um, uh, indicative uh, um, uh, demonstration of how uh, the advantage of the team work could be there and overcoming individual biases. When we work uh, individually, we are driven by our own perception, we are driven by our own um, uh, biases and own individual outlook of a particular job of a particular problem. But when we work in a team, we can share our thoughts, we can share our perception and the feelings and we always we get a opportunity to get screened and our perception and understanding becomes refined and we come out from our biases. That is the most important advantage of a teamwork. So, and it is possible when we have mutual trust, faith and respect to each other. Next. There are few disadvantage we should also understand and be aware 
in when we, you are working in a team or you are creating a team as a, a leader. So, first is the stifling of individuality and hence creativity. Sometimes individuality becomes bigger in a team building. So, when an individuality or the I factor becomes a bigger that is a deterrent of a team better team building. So, always avoid the I factor and, uh, and avoid that and therefore, you can enhance the creativity, cost of time and effort in building a team. Team building is an investment of time and resource. If you want to um, have a long term benefit in your organization in your city, you have to build a stronger team which will be dedicated, which will be matured enough, which will be uh, adult enough to invest their own time uh, together. So, it is the cost of time and effort which is required to uh, create a better team. So, it takes time. So, basics of decisions may tend to keep team member happy rather than being critical examination of situation and key factors. So, sometimes uh, the basis of uh, decision uh, becomes critical. So, in a team where you are working it is important to have a consensus and then take a decision and uh, go ahead. And there could be danger of group pressure when the team becomes very big there are multiple groups and there could be pressure from the groups. So, it is important to understand the group dynamics within the team how various groups are working and a leader has to be strategic in uh, addressing those group dynamics. And sometimes unhealthy competition and livelihood uh, should be avoided a lead, as a leader your job is to create nurture uh, an environment of healthy competition and a cooperation and collaboration instead of unhealthy competition and livelihood. Each and every person within a team will, uh, will, will develop, will grow on their own positives and team positives, not the otherwise, not the on the negatives. Then there are four stages of, of team building. I told you that team building is a uh, time taking and the exercise, it takes time, it takes efforts and resources. So, first stage is the forming. So, forming in the first stage where you form a team, you give time to the team so that they can consolidate, they can, uh, they can, uh, they can discuss their things and after some times you see that there is a situation we call it storming because there are differences within a team. in team and you have to give the time to team to, to come out with the differences and the agreed points. So, that they can come out with the differences agreed differences and can also can chalk out a plan to resolve those differences and come out to a common solution. And those are we are calling as a norming. So, that they can make their own norms set of benchmarks set of timelines guidelines etcetera to perform some job or to reach some uh, 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 some some point of uh, some stature from the current stature and then it is the performing once the forming storming and norming is over then the last stage is the performing where team performs with all trust faith and common goal so if we uh, differentiate these four stages, the forming is the basically coming to a together, together get acquainted, acquainted or knowing each other and, and start thinking. In storming, it is basically identifying the differences in the team and agreeing in differences and also commons. In the norming, they basically it is the, uh, it's the action plan. resolve differences to reach common goal and then you are going to performing stage where you are basically uh, taking action, you are 
taking action actions to perform and therefore, taking action to perform an assessment of your performance. So, therefore, these are the four basic stages in a team in a classical team building exercise. Then the aim of team building is to helping people who work together to function more effectively in teams and to assist the team itself to work more effectively as a whole. So, ultimate aim is to work together and effectively these two are the keywords you should not forget. Then what are the functions of the team improving performance and results team is the uh, the, uh, the combined or cumulative performance and the result of a team is more than the summative performance of the each and every individual that is the best uh, scenario of a team building. Making greater use of both individual and stream strength then resolving problems. A team always resolve problems in a better way because in a team uh, everybody has their idea and they can share the idea and they can resolve problem in a better situation. Then team building involves <coughs> few activities like regular and frequent working sessions, team tackling on problem with help, identifying and tackling root causes and issues, openness, honesty and risk taking, action oriented and commitment to decisions, individual willingness to put time and effort, uh, leaders preparedness to accept feedback development of interpersonal skill and program unique to the team some unique program uh, which is um, uh, unique to the team that can be taken. I think that uh, all these points what uh, I am I have shown in these slides are self explanatory and more or less these actions are going with the four stages of team building that we discussed just now. And so, therefore, uh, let us see that uh, with this chart we uh, uh, started discussion on the uh, organizational performance um, uh, two three lectures back and in this organizational performance we have seen that environmental factor, motivational factor and capacity building factor is the three important factor which influences the, uh, the performance of the uh, organization and where we saw the visioning leadership and team building capacity building, reform, systems and process improvement and change management, conflict resolution, transparencies and accountability ev each and every skills are important in this whole scenario of performance improvement. And one after another we discussed each and everything like um, uh, transparency and ac accountability, urban reform, change management. Uh, uh, visioning exercise and today we discuss the, uh, the leadership and team building. So, therefore, all these attributes with all these skills and attributes and, and related discussions I hope that you got some idea that what are the various pillars of uh, urban governance like all the skills visioning, leadership, team building, change management, reform, uh, conflict resolution, transparency, accountability which improves the urban governance as a whole and also systems and process improvement. So, with this I would like to conclude this this particular lecture and also I would like to have a brief summary of the urban governance part. So, in last four weeks including today the, the current week we have discussed various aspects of urban governance. Next lecture onwards we will uh, start the discussion on the uh, urban management and the development management. So, we started the discussion in the first lecture with the introduction to urbanization where we discussed the basic concepts of urban areas, concepts of urban areas and then we discussed the urban governance, where also we discussed the concepts of governance, general concept, various tiers and constitutional provision basically <coughs> we discussed the 74th constitutional amendment act 1992. And various provisions under that constitutional amendment we have seen that under this constitutional amendment municipality is the elected government third tier government and it has 18 specific job and it is kind of a Ramayana and Mahabharat uh, document for um, every municipality. The legislative provisions 
and legislative is also a very important document after constitutive uh, constitutional provisions every state government they have uh, made their uh, respective uh, state act municipal law or municipal act or municipal corporation act to streamline their activities in the municipality organizational interfaces this lecture was basically uh, focused on the interfaces between the organization people and group and we discussed that these interfaces were vertical and horizontal both. Then we discussed the people and community, what kind of uh, people and community groups are there. We had two discussions on that, uh, 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 focused on the people and community. We discussed thoroughly that what could be the models of the community participations in planning and your urban governance. Then we discussed the few important uh, uh, pillars of the urban governance as a resource like people we discuss land as a basic resource environment and ecology and then we discuss the feature of nagar panchayat and non municipal urban local bodies that also we discussed in a in, in one particular lecture then we we entered into organizational development where we see that an or how an organization functions what are the attributes or the influencer which actually influence the organizational performance we have seen the environmental motivational and the capacity which uh, which influences the organizational performance and to improve that there are various aspects which need to develop and which need to be taken care of like transparency and accountability capacity building of organization uh, we had two detailed discussions on the capacity building including all the ongoing programs in the capacity building and training and systems and process improvement which is also required to enhance the organizational capability urban reforms and managing change we had two lectures in urban reform and managing change we thoroughly have seen that how urban reform was instrumental in uh, in last um, um, more than 10 years from 2004 to 2018 and because of the reform each and every urban local government they are going through a change management paradigm and because of this change management paradigm they are supposed to bring a long term and short term and medium term changes in the government as a whole for that they need some amount of visioning for the city that also we discussed in one lecture whenever change management is there conflicts will be also there. So, resolving conflicts in the change management and then today we uh, ended the discussion with the leadership and team building without a, uh, a effective leadership and team building uh, an urban governance cannot be uh, a better governance. So, with that we concluded the discussion on the urban governance. So, based on this uh, we will share uh, the, the reading materials I hope that you have gone through the basic essence of this lecture series. Next lecture onwards, we will start the discussion on the uh, planning and development. So, lecture 21 will be basically few essential concepts of the planning and development, so that we can start understanding that um, following the governance, leadership and team building, how actually we manage day to day work of an of a, um, organization and development work special, especially in the urban sector. That is a very interesting part which we will uh, follow mostly 4 to 5 weeks and followed by in the last um, uh, few weeks we will discuss the um, essential competency skills and the self development activities required at the individual level for the city managers and the leaders. So, therefore, I thank you very much for attending this lecture. Thank you very much.